Before the universe existed, there was Anu. This was the unchanging stasis. And into this stasis came Padomai, the agent of change that created the universe. From the chaos of creation came the Atada. These formless spiritual beings populated the universe. And of all of these beings, then came Akatosh. He was the first to acquire form and identity, and he was the first to bring the concept of time into the Elder Scrolls universe. This was the beginning of time in the story and in the game. In this series, we're going to explore various scientific concepts in the Elder Scrolls universe, and even though it may go against the logic of the game, we're going to ignore the magic, we're going to ignore the myth, and we're going to focus only on the science as we know it today. We are going to try to recreate the entire solar system and the entire universe in the Elder Scrolls as it's known to the characters in the game and use various games including Universe Sandbox 2 to explore the planets, the stars and the entire universe of this beautiful series of games. Welcome to What The Math and I hope you learned something new from this video. And welcome to Skyrim, a game that many of you have most likely played and possibly even finished. Now, what many of you, including myself, have probably not done is, of course, look up into the sky and admire the beauty that you see in front of you. Now, the thing is, uh, in Elder Scrolls universe, all of these stars and all of the planets that we'll be discussing are explained with magic and with a creationist myth that is somewhat similar to what people on Earth used to believe as well uh, many, many, uh, many years ago, hundreds of years ago, and possibly even today some people still believe it as well. Uh, but today we also have scientific knowledge that that does allow us to explain all of these stars and all of these other objects in space. Um, and we'll talk about how it's explained in Elder Scrolls in one of the future videos. Today we're gonna only focus on the inner system. Today we're going to be only talking about something called Mundus. Now Mundus is the name of the sun in, um, in this particular game and I'm gonna show it to you by advancing time. So here we go, I've advanced time a little bit and what you see in the sky right there is of course Mundus. Now the way it's explained in um, in the mythology is that this was um, a god or a deity that escaped and made a hole in um, something called Asterius, which is basically a cover on the outside of the universe, which we'll talk about more in detail later on. Uh, but um, we're going to be doing this scientifically and think of this as a star. So this is going to be a star. And also Mundus is another word for the so-called inner solar system. So this is this uh, actual star, uh, the planet we're on, and all of the other planets in this particular region. Now, the thing is, this planet is not Earth. This is a planet called Nirn, N-I-R-N. And I'm going to show you what this planet has in terms of moons as well. And here is one of the moons of Nern. This is a moon called Masser. Now, Masser is a pretty massive moon, as you can tell, uh, just by the sheer size of this object in the sky. And if you actually look really closely, you'll notice that it's actually actively moving through the sky. Now, there's another moon called Secunda, but unfortunately, I believe in Skyrim it doesn't actually show up, or you don't actually see it all the time, but it is orbiting Masser. So, around Masser, there's another moon orbiting a much smaller moon called Secunda. Both of these, um, in the mythology, are represented as um, sort of the spirits that sacrifice themselves so that they could actually follow uh, Nern, which is by itself the representation of God. Now, the way um, the mythology works in, in this game or in the series, in other Scrolls series, is that uh, Nern was originally um, sort of a trick. It was a trick by a god called Lorcan, who uh, convinced other gods to create this sort of an experiment, this mortal plane where they could actually play around with life, essentially. And uh, when other gods saw what kind of a creation they, they actually uh, made, and when they were, became disgusted by it, many of them actually decided to leave this plane and escaped into the outer regions called Asterius, and this is of course the, their representation in the sky. So many of them, when they escaped, they made holes in the sky and they created stars. And the biggest hole was of course uh, Magnus, which of course created the star. Uh, and so a lot of the mythology here is explained very interestingly, but we're going to unfortunately destroy this with science and talk about the actual scientific terms and the actual 
scientific explanations of all of this, which is, of course, uh, is in the game as well. As a matter of fact, the Dwemer race, and this is, of course, the race that is sort of technologically advanced that somehow mysteriously disappeared a long time ago, and you do get to visit their ruins and explore um, their mechanical creations. They actually have a very interesting explanation. And their explanation is actually quite astronomical and quite uh, scientific. As a matter of fact, you get to see this um, explanation if you ever play a game called Elder Scrolls Red Guard um, or Elder Scrolls Adventures Red Guard. There, you can visit a place on an island called uh, Stross Makai. And inside this island, if you actually go in there, and here's actually a picture of what it looks like, you'll find an orrery. And an orrery is basically a mechanical representation of uh, planets. We have them on Earth too. Obviously, um, orries are not uh, specific to to other schools. They they exist in in the real world as well. And here, the orrery represents the Dwemer understanding of the planetary motion. Uh, but the thing is, here's the tricky part. They believed that, and I, I guess everyone in Elder Scrolls believes that everything moves around Nern. In other words, it's a Nern-centered, uh, or I guess similar to Earth-centered approach to understanding the universe. Now, in this video, we're going to investigate that approach, and in the next video, in the next part, we're going to talk about the uh, Magnus-centered approach, or basically Sun-centered or heliocentric approach, as you may want to call it, um, if we're talking about our own planet. And so, um, let's start with uh, Universe Sandbox 2. I'm going to recreate uh, the uh, orrery uh, using Universe Sandbox, or at least try to recreate it, because it's actually going to be really challenging. And then we'll talk about the planets very briefly, because we're going to talk about them in more detail in the future videos. And welcome to Universe Sandbox 2. This is our own solar system, so we're going to not really create anything like this just yet. This was something we're going to do in the next video. We are going to recreate the Dwemer Orrery. So we're going to actually look at the picture that you see right here. And this is sort of the image that you can find on the internet as well. This is by a website uh, and by a team called Dwemer Studies that spent quite a lot of time trying to recreate what you find in, in the Elder Scrolls books, but also what you find in the um, Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard. And uh, this shows you that well, there's a very interesting sort of pattern. So basically, all of these eight planets, except for Nern, are orbiting in uh, strange pathways. And uh, this is something we have to think about. So how are we going to recreate this? And so what you see here are three specific orbital centers. And now this is actually really interesting. How can we re possibly recreate this? Uh, well, you may think that maybe there's something else going on. Maybe, obviously, they're not seeing things properly. Maybe they're just seeing the orbital motion, but they're assuming that it's orbiting around something else, just like we did in the past, and now we know it's actually not true. But we're going to assume that maybe the Dwemer uh, Observatory actually had something um, relatively accurate. So how do we recreate these three centers of mass, essentially? Three um, orbital centers, two of which are not visible. That's right, you guessed correctly, black holes. We're going to create a binary black hole system right in the middle. We're going to put um, a black hole right here, and we're going to put another one a little bit farther away from it, and this is going to be a binary system with balanced motion, uh, maybe at a distance of about, oh, I don't know, uh, two, three astronomical units? Maybe a little bit closer. Let's just say... Uh, about one astronomical unit. And so here they are orbiting around each other. You can actually check their orbits uh, by clicking on this and accelerating time a little bit. Let's see if they're actually, there we go. They're, they started to fly apart. And so this will be our two centers that you see on the bottom. And uh, on, so not on the bottom, but on the bottom and on top. Um, around each of these black holes, we're going to put those planets. So around the bottom one, which is going to be this here, we're going to put a much larger planet called Zenithar, uh, and this planet is, uh, according to this picture, is a little bit smaller than Nern. We're going to assume that Nern is about the size of Earth, so this particular object is going to be just a little bit smaller, maybe size of Venus. So we're actually just going to place Venus and name this object Zenithar. So if you look closely now, you'll notice that it, it kind of orbits in the way that it should be orbiting. Okay, maybe uh, not exactly like it is in the picture. It should possibly be actually orbiting in the um, in this plane, but just for now, we're going to leave it as, as it is. And uh, around Zenithar, we have another planet uh, called Mara. Now, technically, this would no longer be a planet because it's orbiting Zenithar. It would technically be considered to be a moon. 
And so we are going to take a moon and place it right here and we're going to name this moon Mara. Now, what this may suggest is that some gods were actually uh, serving other more powerful gods. So in this case, maybe Zanithar was more, more powerful and more influential than Mara. And because of this, uh, Mara is seen as orbiting around Zanithar. And around Mara, we have another smaller moon called... Dibella. Now, let's see if they actually can orbit around each other because I'm not sure if I placed this in the right sort of orbit. Uh, but essentially, what's happening here, we have Dibella orbiting Mara and Mara orbiting Zanithar and Zanithar orbiting this invisible black hole. Uh, it may actually work. We're going to just leave them alone for now and go to the next black hole, uh, which is right here and place only one object here and this object is another god called Arkai. So this is going to be a planet called Arkai. So here it is. Here's the blue planet. It's all by itself in this sort of orbit around this other uh, mysterious black hole. And uh, this is what it all looks like so far from the top. So we have uh, Arkai right here and then we have Zanithar, uh, Mara and Dibella orbiting in this region right here and oh no oh unfortunately they decided to uh take a little bit of a closer look at each other and i believe mara collided with the bella so let's actually re redo this from scratch and I think this is our second attempt. Uh, here's Marin de Bell again and Zanitar right there. So as you can see, it's actually not as easy to make these uh, orbit around each other without colliding, especially if, if it's a relatively close uh, proximity. And uh, so, all right, so we have uh, these planets set up. Now, what about the middle? So in the middle right here somewhere, we have Nern. And how can it actually stay there? Now, uh, unfortunately, this is actually, I know this may not work very well, but we're going to try it anyway. We're going to create a berry center using a, one of the features in the game when you combine um, two objects and what you do is you click uh, right click on this and there will be a choice here to create a berry center. Now this used to work really well then something happened and, and it doesn't really work as well anymore but this will create something called a berry center. This is the center of gravity between these two black holes and since they're actually same in mass it obviously is uh, right in the middle of them. Uh, what this allows us to do is hypothetically create an orbit uh, around the berry center. So we can actually place an object hypothetically that will stay here without flying anywhere away. So uh, one of the explanations that we can actually uh, have for this particular um, Nern centric um, world is essentially if, if Nern is right here in the middle. It's right between the two black holes and has more objects orbiting around it. And this is what we're going to try to create. But I know that as soon as I place this, look what happens. If I place Earth here, it will not stay around the barrier center. It will actually start approaching one of the black holes. So I may have to pause the game here because uh, it doesn't stay in the barrier center, unfortunately. I know it's not really uh, perfect and it's a feature that's still kind of missing. But we're going to try it anyway. So we're going to place it in Barry center. And I think this is a pretty nerd looking planet. If you actually try to uh, squint a little bit, it's green enough. And we're just going to place a little bit of water on it, make it more habitable and also bigger in size. And this is actually uh, all frozen because there's technically no sun here to warm this all up. But anyway, we're just going to ignore this for now. We're going to name this planet Nern and zoom out just a little bit while it's still sort of in the same region of space and place uh, other objects around it. So the first object here is a smaller planet called Kinnereth. And we have another object orbiting in a slightly different plane called Akatosh. Now Akatosh is um, a very important object because that's basically the god who created time and he's one of the most if not the most important uh, planets in uh, Elder Scrolls uh, cosmology and then we have a red planet and we actually might want to use Mars for this we have a red planet called Julianos that has another object called Stendar orbiting around it so this is Julianos and Stendar and if we zoom out we'll see that there's Nern in the middle right here and we have Akatosh and Kinnereth and all of these uh, should technically be orbiting around Nern if the berry center worked correctly. Unfortunately, since the berry center doesn't really work, doesn't function very well, uh, it's very difficult for us to achieve that. So until 
Universe Sandbox 2 team fixes the Barry Center, it's going to be quite impossible to officially recreate this uh, Dwemer Orrery model. And one thing you were missing from here is, of course, our two moons. And so here we have our Masser and we have our Secunda. And Masser is a relatively large moon from the surface of Nern, so it's, it looks much bigger. Secunda we didn't really get to observe, but it, it is definitely there and it's definitely orbiting Masser as well. And so this is what the model would look like if, it, if Barry Center worked perfectly. We could actually recreate this um, and ultimately create this uh, Dwemer Orrery in Universe Sandbox 2. But unfortunately, well, first of all, the Barry Center doesn't work, but second of all, there's so many problems with this model. One of them is, so where exactly do we place the star? Where does uh, where does this go? Does it go? Uh, does it actually go somewhere outside? Does it go somewhere uh, closer to Nern? Uh, if it goes on the outside, it's going to obviously not provide enough heat. If it goes closer to Nern, it may th throw the other planets off balance. Uh, so that's one problem. The other problem is obviously that uh, well, it's very unlikely that this is a binary black hole system. It's very unlikely that those orbital uh, points that we see in the orrery are black holes or they are basically there at all. As a matter of fact, it's very likely that we're just observing the or regular orbits of the planets around the star uh, and it just appears to move in, in a way as if there was another object somewhere else. And so this particular model is kind of, in my opinion, flawed. And even though I do appreciate and admire Dwemer technology, and I, I know they were very technologically advanced species, uh, or race, I guess, uh, unfortunately, their orrery doesn't explain enough. And so in the next part, we're actually going to recreate this again, but this time with the heliocentric approach. We're going to assume... And by the way, because of the instability, things started to collide already, and Nern is a molten bowl of lava. Uh, goodbye, Elder Scrolls universe. And Tamriel is gone. But anyway, so in the next video, we're going to recreate this from a heliocentric approach, or I guess in this case, Magnus-centric approach, and we're going to create the solar system, uh, assuming that just like in our world, um, it's just a misunderstanding. It, uh, the Elder Scrolls mythology makes it sound like the um, planets are moving around Nern and uh, it may actually not be true and in the next video we're going to explore this in more detail. Anyway, so I hope you learned something about uh, Elder Scrolls Universe and now you know what the actual universe looks like from the perspective of the game mythology and in the next video we're going to do a little bit more science behind it. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, I'll see you guys in the next video, share this with your friends who like Elder Scrolls and Skyrim and game you later, bye bye.